I've now set up a nine front file on auth server. I'm adding a diskless terminal that pixie boots off the server and a headless CPU server too. And I've updated all the software. But so far, all this has been done with 64-bit x86 hardware, an AMD CPU in the file server, an Intel CPU in the terminal. Next, I'll show how to cross-compile everything for other architectures like ARM. So Plan 9 systems have always been easy to cross-compile for. The history of its development at Bell Labs meant tinkering with a variety of hardware. Uh, early on, they had terminals using like the Motorola 68000 series. Uh, they had multi-CPU servers from Silicon Graphics, later adding things like DAC Alpha, Sun Spark, and of course the Intel x86 series. And they also just did a lot of work developing and testing hardware at AT&T. So cross-compiling by hand is only complicated in terms of figuring out which number or letter corresponds to the architecture you're targeting. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that later. For now, I'll just cover doing a cross-compile of the base system. If you're dealing with a fresh 9-front install, the FQA will recommend uh, running the root stub script to make sure all the directories that may be missing are in place. So I've already run sysupdate, and that uses git to update all the system source code. I'm back here in slash sys slash source, and I just ran make install, and again for plan 9 and 9 front that's shortened to just mk um, and that's all I had to do to recompile all the code. Now make will check with the environmental variables which I haven't covered it yet or technically everything's a file so it is stored in uh, env and the one I'm actually looking for is object type and you can still sort of access it like a traditional variable and for being a 64-bit Intel, that's designated as AMD64. If I want to compile for ARM64, I just have to change that. So I'm going to say object type equals ARM64. Now when I run make install, it's just going to run through and compile everything for ARM64. If you can see here, real closely on the edge. Missed it a second ago, but um, oh, there it is. It's using 7C and 7L, so that corresponds to the 64-bit uh, ARM compiler. So it only takes like a minute to recompile everything for the system. Um, one of the interesting things about this is that uh, basically the Plan 9 people sort of stuck with the original intent behind how Unix systems should work, small programs that you could chain together. So there's not a lot of really huge um, things to compile. Some of the biggest stuff that gets compiled in here is actually uh, Ghost Script for handling PDFs and stuff like that. Um, but for the base system, it's it takes maybe about a minute or so. Yep, there it is. It's done. So of course we can clean it up if we want to. But I also mess with a lot of other small systems. Another one that I'll do is Object Type is SPIM, which is the Little Indian MIPS, 32-bit. Uh, so same thing, I can just change the object type, just say make install, and this time instead of 7C and 7L, which is the compiler and the linker, it should say 0C and, or 0C and 0L. So go ahead and let that run too. So, and yeah, that basically is going to make copies of um, all the system software. And again, because the way this does it is with namespaces, you know, anytime you look in bin, you know, all the stuff's already there. Well, that's the stuff compiled for uh, AMD64. If I go up here, you'll see that there's actually directories for all the various architectures that are currently supported. Um, so if I go and look at, you know, AMD 64 or ARM 64, I can go ARM 64. I can look in there. It has its own separate bin. If I look in bin, there's the actual stuff that's compiled for ARM 64. And the same would apply for SPIM too. So, um, looks like it's finished. So if I go to SPIM bin, and now I have 
a bin directory full of programs compiled to run on 32-bit Little Indian MIP systems. Now the compilers will leave a bunch of garbage behind, so to get rid of it, we can run make clean. And that will go ahead and just go through and get rid of all the garbage. So I should just be able to actually look around and see, you know, under command, um, you know, in the compilers or anything here. Let's check Mothra. Yeah, it's just the C stuff. So all the garbage is gone. And that's basically it. Um, you know, later on I'll be doing uh, individual videos on walking through actually compiling stuff for Plan 9 and 9Front. Uh, but cross-compiling is a really a breeze. Uh, it's very easy to do. And uh, later on this will mean that when I attach, say, a Raspberry Pi, I can have it boot off the server. I don't have to use the SD card on it. Those things are notorious for burning out anyway and I can just use the file server as the storage for the Raspberry Pi. And uh hope that was informative, and, and as usual, have fun.